Hey everyone, I just wanted to give a fair warning before going into this episode. We do talk about suicide, but it does end up going down a more positive route. Plus, I do think that you guys will enjoy Kevin's experiences. So, let's get into the episode. Of course, in all of us, that science knows nothing about the force of fear. Welcome everyone to Induced Fear. I am your host, Oscar. And with me, I have Kevin from Where the Weird Ones Are. How you doing, man? I am doing fantastic. Another day above ground is a great motherfucking day. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. I mean, it might be nice to sleep for a good long while for a bit. Hey, man, <laughs> sleep is the cousin of death. We got shit to do. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love sleep. Yeah. Uh, so I was on your show not too long ago, probably last week or two weeks ago. The I. As we are recording this, the episode dropped today. Uh, Literally today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's fitting that we're talking again as your episode dropped. Uh, yeah. But my my question that I would ask you to start the show would be, what's your origin story into the paranormal? Like, what's the what's the thing that brought you in? The thing that brought me in, well, I will say movies definitely um was the start was really the kickstarter um so child's play was child's play 2 specifically was my first ever horror movie that i've ever watched um i was four years old uh my cousin i think she was like 10 and she thought it was hilarious that i was afraid of this fucking movie um and i i don't know if your parents ever did like crochet or anything but you know or if it's just like um or if it's just like new england area or what the hell but like because everybody up here had a mother that like knitted or crocheted their a, like a little throw blanket for them well my mom had made one for each of us kids and it had holes in it and i remember when i was watching child's play uh that night that i tried to cover my face but it had holes so i could still see the tv and my cousin was just yeah (laughs) she she got under the blanket with me and she started laughing her ass off and i was like why are you laughing at my misery (laughs) but uh but that movie forever has made me afraid of dolls like i like literally like so um i also saw it at an early age too probably around the same time um tim curry as pennywise and uh who tim curry was an amazing actor he's a a voice of a lot of child uh children's uh animated movies too yeah he was originally going to be the voice of the joker in the batman animated series yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) and um so yeah that movie scared the shit out of me too and so i became afraid of clowns and dolls but now I'm just like clowns make me uncomfortable, like a person or whatever. Like, I don't I don't want like a clown like thing in my house like you have in your house. Like, yeah. I could never do that. <laughs> um, I could go to your house and look at your clown and be like and be OK with it. But um, anybody like at, at carnival and stuff i um, it's just a, it's an uncomfortable thing it's not necessary a fear but when it comes to dolls dolls i am fr- afraid of and everybody well not everybody but a lot of um a lot of like paranormal groups or whatever they tend or that people that collect haunted objects there's always like a haunted doll and I'm just yeah. like, you can't do that. Like it number one, I'm already afraid of the doll as it's not haunted. So the fact that it's now you're telling me this thing is haunted, I'm I'm definitely afraid of it. But um so that like uh really intrigued like my curiosity, I guess, in my yeah. um imagination. Now my first ever experience was in Lancaster, Vermont. We were living in a trailer. And my sister had, um, I think we just got wa- done watching Ghostbusters 2. Um, and she had started crying, saying it was time for bed. And she started crying that there was a witch in her window. And, you know, my mom's like, 
um, she runs in and, you know, she's like, there's nothing in your window, blah, 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 blah. And mind you, we were living on the side of a mountain in like, and if you don't know much about Vermont, Ver even though it's like right next to New York, like it's next to upstate New York. So upstate New York yeah. is nothing woods but woods. Yeah. Vermont is nothing but woods and mountains, you know? Um, and we're, so the closest house to us was another trailer and it wasn't that close. Like it, we could see it, but regardless. And then there was just a, a farm down the street um, a little ways. But yeah, so my sister said she was seeing a witch. And um, my dad had just got home from work. And he was in there. And he went into her bedroom to like console her and stuff like that. And I remember walking by her room, going towards my room. Uh, my Me and my older brother shared a room, and it was always the last room. Like, and no matter where we lived. And we moved around a lot. Um, and everywhere we went, me and my brother always had, like, this back little freaking room and that freaking we had to go by everybody else's room to get to ours. But um, So I'm walking down the hall, and I get to the to the doorway, and I just see these two figures go by my window and now it's it's black it's already black out you know like i can't yeah. see any i can't make any like uh figures of anything like i can't see shapes of trees i can't see shapes of you know the bushes and shit outside like i literally can't see anything and i just see these two figure figures that look like they look like people just go right by my window <laughs> and i was just like oh that happened. So I went back out to my living room and uh, sat on the couch. My dad got done with my sister comes out and he goes, what are you doing? And I was like, sitting on the couch. He's like, go to bed. I was like, ah, I'm fine. Uh, so I did and nothing happened, but yeah. um, what I, cause because my sister uh, said she saw a witch in her window, I associate these two figures with being witches because uh, the trailer, although it is a trailer, it was up on a like this foundation, so it was really high. And to be able to be a normal person walking by the windows, you would have to be like ten foot tall to like make to be seen in the windows. You know what I mean? So a regular sized person uh, just walking by wouldn't yeah. have caused this. Uh, um the, the 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 shadows so i attribute it them to just being these two witches on flying around the house on their brooms just like <laughs> <laughs> very <know>? classic <laughs> yeah and i was just yeah. and that's always how i thought of them was that noise and everything just being around just flying around on the brooms now i never saw anything out in that um uh, at least that, to the best of my re recollection i've never saw anything like that again um in that house specifically um so i don't i don't i don't really know um it's, it's either they were witches or or giants if they were like 10 yeah, feet tall either way is coming off paranormal <laughs> yeah and and it that well they whisked they whisked by too it was just like uh, a quick it was just like really fast um, but I was able to make out that they had a head and shoulders and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I was just like, holy shit. You know, they were darker than the fucking darkness outside, you know? And uh, yeah, ever since then, it was just, I was pretending to hunt monsters. I was pretending uh, to fight ghosts and stuff like that. And um, I remember we moved into a trailer park actually i think the trailer park was before vermont so we were living in gorham new hampshire um in a trailer park because i think i was in head start in gorham and then in vermont i started first grade yeah so that might not have been like the actual thing that uh got me into it you know because when we lived in gorham there was a kid that was like really into paranormal and stuff like that. And I remember yeah. this and I was like four or five, like I was four. I had definitely was four. Um, was this kid the same age as you or was he older? 
he was like two, maybe three years older. Oh, okay, because um, I was going to say, it was really weird for a four-year-old to it, be like, I'm super into the paranormal. <laughs> yeah, and he had this weird game of a vampire, and you had to, like, stick your finger in it, and it would, like, uh, like bite your finger. Okay. I can't remember, like, the action, like, what the action of the game was. Is it I almost remember... like the alligator one, where you're, like, pressing the teeth? Yeah, something like that. Down? Okay. Yeah, like, I don't... Like, I don't know the exact action to like that you had to do, but you had to stick your finger in his in his mouth and he had these big teeth and um and stuff like that. And he used to tell me that he used to tell me that his mother had um a spirit that would follow her around the house and stuff like that. Like he said, it's like this weird stuff, like all the time, like every day that yeah. I was around this kid, he said this shit. So I think. I think that might have been really what uh, what really sparked the interest to begin with, and and then add on the movies and Ghostbusters. Yeah. I loved Ghostbusters, so um, you know I've never questioned um, if ghosts were real or not. I've always been like, yeah, they're fucking real, man. Yeah. They're definitely real. I think that's something most people believe in. I think even even people who will say they aren't like. They don't believe in ghosts. If they go to a dark place and they get scared, all of a sudden they're they're the quickest believer uh, in ghosts. You know, <laughs> as soon as you hear yeah. a little noise in a dark area, you're like, okay, maybe ghosts are real. <laughs> <laughs> that's proof enough. Let's get out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's pretty funny that it, that's what uh what got you into the paranormal. I mean, like Chucky is voodoo. Uh, possessed doll so yeah then that'll do that but then the kid with all his like i guess the cool toys the spooky cool toys yeah really, yeah he was he was, he was cool yeah he was wicked into halloween too it was fucking <laughs> like thinking back on it like we were young man like we were wicked young and i it's weird because i've told all my stories a couple times now and um i think tommy was the first uh um other podcast that i was on ever to tell my stories and he's like what got you into it and i just told him that shadow person story yeah. and then like literally it just dawned on me that this kid was fucking weird as fuck <laughs> <laughs> and but i had a, I had the hot i remember i had the hots for his sister i was four years old i was like oh look at this girl she was like 16 <laughs> You're a man that knows what you want. Huh? I know, I know. <laughs> I was, like, I, re I remember it though. Like, and and uh, I hurt myself over his house too one day, and she, uh, uh, picked me up and started like running me. Like, I my leg was bleeding really bad. And she picked me up and she held me like a baby and was running me to my. She <laughs> called my dad and then she started running me towards my dad's house. And then my dad came out and was like, oh, and then fucking it ended up being nothing. But it was just like, it was just like a little cut, but yeah. it was like bled a lot. And she was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and you were like, it's okay. It was the best day of my life. You carried it me. Was, it was. I was <laughs> so happy. I was like, oh, she's touching me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's weird to like, um, like, obviously I didn't, I didn't think of her in like a sexual way. I was just yeah, like, yeah. oh, she's really pretty. You know what I mean? Yeah um the only way a, a four-year-old can right can really think yeah yeah i just yeah I, oh man i i remember and and it's funny too because there was another girl that that was like 16 that uh, i thought the same way of around the same kind of time we used to get uh go to this babysitter's house and this girl was always there and i remember one night we were playing halloween I can't remember, but I remember I was upset about something and I fucking just sat on the porch where they counted, where they, the counter counted, but everybody was, they couldn't find me because I had walked back <laughs> to where the counter was. So everybody's like looking for me and they're like, Kevin, Kevin. And then uh, that girl found me and she was like talking to me or whatever. And then like literally my dad showed up um, as she's talking to me and then she like kissed me on the cheek and I was just like, oh. <laughs> you know and then and my brother happened to see it and then we're in the car and we're driving home and f my dad my brother goes kevin got a kiss on the cheek and my dad's like by who 
he's like and he told her the girl's name i can't remember her name now um and my face was like completely red and my dad was like yeah <laughs> yeah you get it <laughs> so uh, it was like uh a couple of things were awakened during that time uh yeah well i knew i knew that i liked girls back when yeah. i was very little i guess yeah basically and then and then you ended up liking the paranormal in that same area <laughs> exactly exactly so to go over that kid's house that weird kid's house i was getting like i was t- being able to talk about paranormal and be able to look at his sister yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it, i should have had since you brought up chucky i should have had my chucky doll out here for this one oh, <laughs> i would have karate chopped him right through the screen no i'm just kidding <laughs> Yeah, we have a full, uh, like, one to one scale of the the good guy doll. Oh my god, <laughs> that's crazy! I saw this little kid dressed up as fucking Chucky one Halloween, and like, he was like doll size, and he came just like, and he was his parents weren't fucking like right on top of him, so he was kind of like running wild, and he just runs by me, and I was like, holy shit, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Like I got like right in karate yeah. and so yeah. I was just like <laughs> just ready to just punt a child. Me, keeps running. Yeah. <laughs> and like he had like a good fucking mask on too, man. Oh uh, yeah, no. <laughs> no. Was... So you just have actual Chucky running at you in yeah. that moment. That's all he thought. <laughs> My PTSD, dude. I almost yeah. punched that kid across <laughs> the street. <laughs> that was pretty great. <laughs> So what were what were experiences that followed after this? Where you met you met this kid, he was into all the weird shit, paranormal stuff. Did that automatically send you on like this path of like uh what year would that have been? Were ghost shows on at the time? Were you like watching ghost things or uh, unsolved, unsolved mysteries, mysteries was yeah. definitely big um, during that time. But uh, my mom kind of watched them, but I, I did too a little bit. Um, my grandparents were like old fashioned because we ended up moving in with them right after uh, Vermont, right after I saw the the shadow figures. Yeah. Um, and their basement was full of fucking shadow figures. And uh, my grand my grandparents uh, loved the 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 Twilight. Well, I shouldn't say my grandparents. My grandmother would watch the Twilight Zone, and my mom would watch the Twilight Zone and stuff. My grandfather was not like he's like I can't I can't stand this sci fi shit. This is so fake. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, mm, are you sure? <laughs> but um. He liked he liked cowboy stuff, so it was either freaking um, a western or fucking Twilight Zone or or yeah. game show. They loved game shows, which was really weird. But um, my mom definitely threw on um, unsolved mysteries every once in a while, and, um, and then Are You Afraid of the Dark came on um, a few years later because I think. I think Are You Afraid of the Dark started when I was like eight. And Goosebumps too. Goosebumps was pretty big when I was eight. Yeah. So like my ex my ex my first experience I was like five. And then um and then my other experiences so we moved from Vermont to this town that I live in now. Um nothing ever really happened in the apartment except for like traumatic like physic like real traumatic stuff yeah uh um and then my parents split up and we moved in with my grandparents and when we moved in with my grandparents i was like seven or i was almost eight <clears throat> and that's when i started seeing shadow figures in the basement like regularly um oh. and they put they so my uncle was still living at home at the time and he moved his bedroom to the basement and then all of us kids got one bedroom and then my mom got another bedroom so there was four of us in one bed in one bedroom but my brother my little brother was still pretty young so he would 
you know, spend a lot of time in my mom's room um, at night. So, um, and I think like a year after we had moved in there, uh, my uncle ended up getting his own place. So my older brother got his bedroom put in the basement. And that same Christmas that his room went down there, we got a uh, Nintendo 64 for Christmas. So the oh. N- Nintendo 64 automatically went to his room for some freaking reason. <laughs> so the only way that I could play video games was to go into the basement. So I had to go to the, into the basement and see these shadow figures. And at first for a long, for a while, I was scared of them, but then I realized that they're not doing anything. They're just standing or, they're just standing there they're just there peering and they'll be like in the back corner or somewhere or they'll be like almost looking like like this leaned up against like the lolly column or some sometimes they look like they're cr- they're they're underneath the stairs and they're just like crouched there like fucking iced tea i mean vanilla ice like <laughs> yo boy yeah. um but uh <laughs> But yeah, I saw them almost every freaking time I went into that basement. And my brother's room was finished, but where I was seeing them was in the unfinished part. So like you yeah. come down, you come down the stairs and then they there's like this section and it goes to the back of the basement and then it goes around the corner. Um and that's was all like unfinished. And then you had to go through this unfinished part to my brother's door. And then once you go in there, it was all finished. So I never saw shadow figures in my brother's room. Um, but I always saw them out there. It was. And they seemed haunting. intelligent. Like you know, they were like uh, intelligent hauntings or, or was it, did it come off as residual? You know, I don't really know. I don't I I don't know if I can uh intelligently answer that question. Okay. Um because I just I just know them as as shadows and they were just they yeah. were just there. So residual? Yeah, it could be. Intelligent? Also could be. Um there's a lot of theories about shadow shadow people as being yeah. some people from either the past or the future that are just like peering at us and they're seeing us the same exact way. Yeah, so. like almost but, almost them. You probably seem like a ghost. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I saw that all the time, and um, and my fucking sister. One morning, we're we're getting ready for school, and she just like drops her backpack and screams bloody fucking murder, and runs to my my uh down the hallway to my mom's room, and I just followed her. And um, my mom's like, what's going on? My sister's all hysterical. And my mom's like, what's happening? And I was like, I have no idea. She screamed and she fucking ran. So I felt like I had to do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my sister ended up saying that she saw this black mass move from the kitchen into the living room. And it freaked her the fuck out. And she loves telling that story as like, you know, you know, if out of everybody that I know, Kevin would survive a horror movie because he didn't ask fucking questions. He just took yeah, off running. Ran. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and it go, it ties into like what we were talking about on uh, my show when we were talking about um, you you had to be a, a man for your uh, fiance about like the uh, haunted object, and I was like, I'm oh right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. You handle it. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would have passed it on to somebody else. Yeah. Uh no, it like when it comes to like stuff like that, I can I can I would uh, you know put my my best foot forward, but um nine times out of ten, if it's just like something that kind of like jump scary, I guess I would just take off. You know. Um but um during this time you know my my parents had split and there was a lot of things going on um uh so what ended up happening i saw i was nine and you know i tried to uh, commit suicide and i think like two i think it was like two weeks right after 
I was on my on the swing set in the backyard of my grandparents' house, and I see this. I'm on, I'm I'm alone, and I see something out of the corner of my eye, and I just turn my head, and there's this old man sitting on the swing next to me, and um, completely transparent, like I could see right through him, but he had no face. It was like wispy, like I, his face was distorted, um, and I'm looking at him. And from my memory, like, I don't know how he was an old man because I can't see his face, but it was probably his voice because he did speak to me. And the weirdest part about this uh, occurrence is because he had something in his hands or like lap, his hands in his lap. Um, it was stringy. It was, and it was either like he was knitting or crocheting something or he had a bowl of noodles one or the other and i don't know <laughs> what it is so I, we we've come to the general consensus of calling him the spaghetti ghost yeah. uh, <laughs> so he just uh he's sitting there and his head's like turned towards me like he's looking at me but again i can't tell because i can't see his face and he just goes be patient and i go about what and he's like you'll know and then, like, I went into like a paralysis where I wanted to, f I wanted with every fiber of my being, I wanted to get up off of that swing set and run inside so badly. But I fucking held on to those chains so tightly and I stared at the ground, what felt like forever. And it was probably only a couple minutes, you know what I mean? And I'm yeah. staring and I'm staring at this fucking one rock on this ground and on the ground in front of me. And I'm just like, I'm all tense and I want to move and I want to fucking look at him, but I don't want to look at him at the same time. And I can't make my head move again. I can't make any part of my body move. I'm just stuck. Um, and then finally, after probably again, two minutes, um, maybe even less than two minutes, you know, it just, it felt so long. I finally turned my head and he was gone. And it was, um it was so weird and like for a long time i thought i was thinking for for a little bit there i was just like what 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 do i have to be patient about do i have to be patient that um you know um you know things are gonna stop happening to me in the house am i yeah. like am i do i have to be patient um about like in, getting candy you know for my mom or something like that like you know when uh because we had uh D dhs which is you know um department of human services you know uh they, they came a lot and stuff like that and that was the only time that i could get my mom to let me do things yeah because she didn't want to look like a bad mom um yeah, I get that. so like I was like, who do I have to be patient and wait every week for this one visit from this person so that I can yeah. get things, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. So like I, I had like a very child like uh look at it. And I was just like, Yeah, you know, uh, be patient for a toy, be patient for fucking candy, ice cream, you know, it's something like that. Like how like how do I implement being patient to get something? Um, but what I really think he was talking about was just life was going to get better and like yeah um you know because i tried a second time obviously failed because if i succeeded i wouldn't be here talking to you yeah um i contemplated a third time but the third time was like the real turning point that's when i started this spiritual journey so i was 30 um and you know i just started i i cut people out that i felt like were either causing, you know, negative feelings in some way, somehow. And I know that a lot of them don't mean to. Um, yeah. They, they weren't doing it on purpose. It's just a part of who they are, you know. And so I started letting go of a lot of things, started letting go of anger a lot and doing like all this internal work. And what I've realized is that I think it was just being patient with life and I would start achieving things that i wanted like out yeah. of the spiritual journey this podcast came about and from this podcast you know i met so many amazing people like yourself 
uh, Tommy, um, you know, just a lot of other podcasters, a lot of people that just want to tell their stories. Yeah. You know, I, um, like I told you when you were on, like, I, I like to look at, um, the mental health aspect of, you know, experiences and encounters, you know, cause a lot yeah. of people are like, oh, I'm fucking crazy. And then you told me like that one guy's like, I know it's, it's gonna, this is crazy. You're yeah. going to think I'm crazy and stuff. But I mean, and, and you do, you basically do the same thing. Like, um, like you may not, I don't know. I, I cause I've only listened to that one episode. Um, but like just allowing somebody to talk and tell their truth is just, it, it's amazing for, for their oh, yeah. mental being, you know? Um, so yeah. And I, I just, you know, my kids and I are, you know, we're, we're not broke anymore. We have a house. Um, yeah. We have car, we have vehicles, running vehicles, you know, um, mo- a lot of my life was fucking, I don't know if this car is going to start the next day, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. And now we're going on vacations and shit. So like, I think he was just, you know, be patient with life and, you know, things are going to come, stop stressing at the little things. And, uh, man, I wish, um, I had that in the back of my head, um, you know, through my twenties because, I feel like it would have would have helped a little bit more maybe i don't know yeah but i mean like you you got it it all clicked into your mind i think at probably the right time and when you when you needed it because you said you were going to go for a third time and that's when things started to like click in your head of like oh like did it did it pop into your, did that moment pop into your head of be patient like when I was sitting there thinking yeah, about it, con- yeah. Um, no, it, or did no, you just kind of have like a realization of what you? Should yeah. Do? Well, so what ended up happening when I was sitting there? So I had my gun in my lap, and I was just sitting there, and I was living in a basement at the time, and um, so I was sitting on the couch in this like little confined area. Uh, my bed and my kid's bed were both behind the couch. And I was just like, what am I doing with my life? You know, why am I like, I'm always, you know, trying to survive like this whole time. Yeah. And it almost feels like forever since I was a kid, you know, I'm just trying to um, find peace and it's not happening. Like what, what is, is there something wrong with me and stuff? And um, I was sitting there and I don't know what, really possessed me to to do so but i just i texted my ex-wife and you know told her what i was literally doing and um she just she said that actually you want to know what i think maybe subconsciously it kind of like came in because she was like you gotta you just gotta be patient you know and you know, work through your emotions, you know, things are going to get better. She's like, and just know that the kids are going to miss you. Like, just think about the effect that it's going to have on them and stuff. And she goes, you're, you will be missed and all this stuff. She's like, I promise you things are going to get better, but she did. I remember her using those words, be patient. So I think maybe sub subconsciously, that was just like the, the, the switch flipping right there. Yeah. Like the universe telling you, like, this is it. This is, you've been patient. Now you know what to do. Yeah. Going forward. And I think it's, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because, like, during, like, my dark times is when I, when I, like, put a call out to, like, just anything, like, help me in this moment. And yeah. then that's when things started to happen. Um, but as, as you go forward and you, you kind of learn throughout life, you, you learn to deal with more. And then, and then finally one day things just click and you know what to do. And I think sometimes those energies that you're feeling in those moments, I mean, it doesn't have to be like, if you're in a negative mindset, it doesn't have to be negative that comes to you. There's always that, that, that light. And it came for you in, in the form of be patient at the start of when things were, were going negative for you in your life. 
And then when you felt probably at your lowest later on in life, be patient popped up again for you. Yeah. And it was, and, and as you said, you have house, you have cars that work, you don't have to worry. So in the, in the end, being patient ended beautifully for, it, for you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really did. Like, um, I find, cause I find peace in, in, in nature, you know? Yeah. So I could just like, I could sit out in my yard for an entire day and do nothing and just be, feel accomplished. Like I did something for the day, you know what I yeah. mean? And, um, I think like, cause I always was like, I wanted to have, you know, I always wanted to have like, you know, a car, motorcycle, fucking ATVs and stuff like this. And I can barely keep, you know, a vehicle running my entire yeah. life. And now I have, like I said, like I have a car that runs and br- it's not brand new, but it's, you know, it's new. Yeah. Um, I have a motorcycle and that's like, that's my biggest fucking, that's like, like, that's my piece right there, man. Just yeah. being in the wind. Um, and, you know, I never thought that I would ever obtain like a really nice bike. Like I always, like I did, I ha- I've had bikes and they were always ratty. You know, not that yeah. there's anything wrong. Like if you like ratty, because there's people that actually like like ratty bikes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like well, I guess this, got is, this big... is what you're talking about for you. Like yeah, things right. Like you, yeah, yeah. Like I got this big beefy fucking Harley Davidson, and it's fucking eight hangers, and I just like, dude, I fucking I put my arms up like this, and I'm out on the road, and I'm just like, oh, this is so fucking nice. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, let... Let me ask you this when when you're when you're sitting and being still rather it be um you're sitting still on the bike or like you said when you're sitting you're just sitting outside is that when you feel the most calm like when you're kind of like in this moment of stillness and yeah oh yeah okay because that's that's it's what's like interesting it. about about when you first heard be patient and then you were stuck sitting yeah. on the swing it almost it almost uh has some type of correlation like it said be patient be still and enjoy that moment of yeah, not you know, having I, to do i never thought of it like that that's a good point man that's a good point yeah and, and it comes in nature you know what i mean like yeah. nature na- like just being like outside like grounding is super important to me um oh yeah you know when my kids are out in the yard when we are when we are out in the yard like i make my kids take their shoes off and everything like just you know um it's just peace and tranquility you know out in the out in god's creation you know if you believe in god uh there's definitely something anyways um out there there is some form of creator and um however you look at it you look at like the um you know universe is speaking to you it's like god is speaking to you or yeah you know yeah you know, it's just there's a lot of things and you know it just it seems like i'm at i'm just at peace out when i'm outside and i think there's something to that you know and i don't think like religion putting yourself inside um inside a box to fucking worship for three hours um yeah. seems bonkers to me you know what i mean because i feel like you don't need a place to go you don't need a, a man-made temple to yeah to worship um because the earth the earth man the earth is it it gives man um that everything that we need to uh live comes from it so yeah i mean you feel that difference when like you leave a city or something sometimes when i'm driving far away from a city i almost feel like this disconnect almost like a like a matrix like disconnect from the back of my head and uh yeah. and you breathe better out there and you're you're more connected yes absolutely absolutely um it's really fucking it's 
it's cool. It's cool. I like it. I I, well, I, I, I like, hey, people listening, I like nature <laughs> if you haven't figured yeah. it out yet. <laughs> but, I, but I'm happy you found that tranquility, that peace, man, and that we're we're here able to talk. Yeah, today, man. Yeah. You know? There, there was, there's been, there's been days like I still have them sometimes, yeah. um, you know, where I'm just like, uh, but, um, every day's, every day's a work in progress, <clears throat> you know, as long as you're working on yourself every day, I think, uh, uh, everything is, is going to be a okay. Um, but yeah, no, I went like through my, er, my teens and my early twenties, man. Um, you know, I was just an angry person, like all the time. I was just talking about this uh, last night. I uh, recorded for another episode for my show, and I had uh, these two ladies on that uh, do a po- that are doing a podcast together, and um, we were talking about anger and stuff like that, and uh, and I were just like all through like my teens and shit. Like I was always in fights getting in school fights in school out on the street and shit like that. I ended up be, uh, getting into uh, amateur cage fighting because I just wanted to fucking hurt people, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I only did that for a little bit. And then my son was born and I was like, I got to do something real in my life. Um, but regardless, like, like now, like somebody can like literally talk shit to me and I like, I have no reaction. Like, so like the story I told last night, um, I was at a gas station and, um, apparently I cut this guy off, didn't see him anywhere. And like, it was a pack, the gas station was packed and I pull up, I literally have put my nozzle in and this guy comes up yelling at me about how I cut him off and he was waiting for this pump. And I was like, where were you? Like, it, it like literally took me like a little bit to get out, walk around, run my card and then put the nozzle yeah. in like where have you been like what are you yeah. talking about and he's like all oh, these fucking kids today and no fucking respect and like i'm looking at him, i'm just staring at him and he's probably only two f- yeah, excuse me he's probably only two feet away from me so if i really wanted to i could have reached out grabbed this guy by the collar and just yeah gave him some and uh i just looked at him and i'm like you keep fucking around, you're going to turn me back to the old me. And he just kind of like goes like this. And then he turns around and walks away. And I was like, did I just fucking quote Dr. Dre? Dude, what the fuck was that? <laughs> oh. But like I, I said it very like monotone. I didn't have, I didn't fluctuate my voice and raise it or anything. Yeah, you've just been able to keep that that calmness within you and just be... Yeah. If I was 20, I would have just decked him. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I remember doing that when I was, you know, the same, angry. You're angry when you're younger, especially when you've had, like, a rough life growing yeah. up, you know? For sure. Uh, and now, now it's like... Moments when like somebody's screaming at me. I, I remember one guy tried to say that I ran through a stop sign and I was like, first of all, I'm in a company truck. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to affect my money. Um, but he's like screaming from his car as I'm getting out of my truck. And I'm like, listen, I didn't do that. But if I did, sorry. I was like, but I'm telling you now, I didn't do it. and I'm not going to fight you, man. You know, I'm not going to fight yeah. you on this over and, fucking running a red light. Like, come on yeah. now. <laughs> and then he was like just screaming. He was like punching his his steering wheel and like getting Jesus really crazy. Christ. And then I was like, all right, you good. You're done now. Like, I got to go and, and work. And then he just huffed and puffed and then slammed on his on his gas and then drove off all crazy. And I was like, yeah, he just wanted to fight. And I wasn't going to yeah. give that to him. <laughs> Yeah, and now his day is ruined because of yeah. his own self. You know what I yeah. mean? Like he probably fumed about that for the rest of the fucking day. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, I will say though that recently, right before, so it was just right in October. Um, I kind of had, I almost, I almost let myself go, 
in this moment. And this guy, so we're, I was in my company truck. I'm in the lane that turns. Um, so, but you turn and there's two lanes, right? So I want to get in the further lane. So, but his lane, this guy's lane, you have to go straight. There's literally arrows on the fucking pavement. Yeah. And there's a sign right there in front of us that says this lane left, this lane straight. Um, so I have a, I have a, I have a clear and I go and he goes at the same time and cuts off in front of me and literally stops in front of me. So I'm across, uh, I'm across two lanes now. Yeah. So I fucking blow my air horn at him and he just goes like this. And I go, you were supposed to go fucking straight. You fucking dildo. And he's just like, he starts yelling something from his window and I go, Oh, suck a dick or something like that. He goes, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't do that. And I go, yeah, 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 whatever. And he gets, he get, gets out of his car and I go, get the fuck back in your car. You fucking little fucking fruitcake. <laughs> and, um, he was an older gentleman, probably in his, you know, forties around the 45 ish area, maybe 50. Um, and like, he was, he was mad that I like he, cause he, was behind me. I remember seeing him in my mirror and then he moved over to that lane to get in front of me. So then because I yelled at him, he wouldn't move. So then I couldn't go anywhere. And I was across two lanes and there's yeah. other cars, you know? And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm yelling at him. I was like, let's go. Yeah, let's you're go, in a big let's truck go. too. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so I got out of the car, I got out of my truck and I was, it was literally, it was a Friday. And I was literally leaving the next morning to go to Florida with my kids. And I put my face in his window. I go, if you don't move this fucking car, I'm going to knock you out. And he goes, oh, yeah? And I go, yes. And he go, and he opens his door. I was like, oh, please get out, I said. I was like, please get out. I was, I was like, I'm going to fucking, I was like, yeah. I'm going to fucking hit you. You get out. And he gets out. And he like, I don't think he realized like how big I was. Um, and he like, he like gets out and then he's just like, Oh, and then he like steps backwards and he like steps into his door and he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, do it. He's like, you're in your fucking company car, company vehicle. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. You're fucking with my day right now. And I was like, <laughs> I'm going to fucking lay you out. He's like, do it, handle your business, be a man. And I go, and I just stood there for a second and I contemplated, I was like, there's like several ways out of here. I was like, I hit this guy, knock him out. He hits his head off the pavement. He and he might die. Um, yeah. I hit this guy. I get arrested. Either way, like I t put my hands on him, I'm most likely going to be arrested. Yeah. And I was like, and then I'm not going to go to Florida. My kids are literally already at my house waiting. Uh, oh no, I had to go pick up my kids that night. I was like, so my kids will be there fucking like where the hell's dad you know and stuff like that and yeah. i literally just stood there and he's like you're not gonna you're not gonna do shit because you're a bitch and i just stood there and i stared at him and then he goes get back in your fucking truck little boy or something like that and i just stood there and fucking didn't say anything and then he got back in his car and then, and as he's getting back in his car like starts to get back in his car. I turn around to walk away and he looks at the lady. That's it. Cause it's also a crosswalk right there. Yeah. He goes, I'm sorry, ma'am. I was like, no, the fuck you're not bitch. <laughs> like what the fuck is wrong with you? Like you yeah. literally made this happen. You just yeah. fucked up people's day for like five, 10 minutes. Like all you had to that's do was crazy. just continue on. We weren't, I was like, we're not going to see each other again. Like all you had to do is continue. Yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck? It didn't have to become that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I shouldn't have, I guess I shouldn't have yelled profanities at him, but still like, yeah, we have our moments. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously that guy was so offended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he took it so personally. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Uh, it's so wild. But yeah, <laughs> People are wild. It, it, I can't believe, I still like, when I think about it, I can't believe I got out and like fucking was like, I was gonna hit him. I wanted to so bad. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. What is wrong with me? You know, who am I? Work work beats you down sometimes, man. It does. Especially What's when up? you gotta be. Especially when you're driving the whole time. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. I wish I was listening to a motivational podcast in that moment because maybe I wouldn't have said anything. Yeah. But I also have, I don't know if you have this in your, your company vehicle, but they have, it's a thing called Lytics and it's a camera that's on your um, uh, windshield. So it records you in the vehicle, in the cab, and then it c- records everything in front of you. Okay. And I, I came back from Florida and I got called in the office. Oh, you know, man. Like, <laughs> we got you on Linux. I was like, oh, what did I do this time? You know, like, was I speeding uh, or something yeah. like that? Uh, actually, we caught a fight. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't catch me getting out of the out of the truck. It, it only yeah. recorded the part where because it was a near miss. Um, And I told my boss, too, about it anyway, right after it happened. She's like, sounds like you really need this vacation. I was like, yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> But I was watching the video and, you know, he lit like he I, I was thinking like maybe it wasn't that bad, but he was literally like it was like inches from smashing into the side of this guy because he decided to do this. Yeah. And I blow my horn and then it, it just shows me stick my head out. You fucking build up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, People, oh, cool. I get to test your patience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but uh, it's it's. It's a funny thing too to go back to like uh like the the calmness and the the nature aspect of things too. Yeah. Um I had this fucking weird so as a recovered memory, I was doing uh regression therapy and I was trying to um, you know, bring up things in my in my past trying to heal from you know, trying to heal from things. Yeah. As a child that happened. <laughs> And um, this 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 story came out of it. Now I remember. I'll well, I'll tell you the story, and then I'll tell you what I remember organically and what I don't. So I used to ha- I used to wear glasses when I was a kid, and um, it was one morning. It was just a light dusting of snow. You know, it wasn't like plowable or anything like that. It was just like just a quick dusting, like the the um roads weren't like covered in snow it was just the literally the ground um and my sister wanted to go outside and play and i remember my mom saying that we had to go somewhere so we weren't allowed to be out for too long so uh, we went outside and we used to pretend that we were hunting monsters or aliens out in the middle of the woods so we found uh squirrel tracks in the snow and we pretended it was an alien and we're following the tracks and, you know, we're making up a story in our, as we're walking, like at, we're yeah. talking back and forth, making up like, Oh, Oh, and then you do this. And then I do that, you know, like, and um, we're coming up onto this Creek that I used to, I played in like all the time. Um, I would catch frogs and, you know, frog eggs and, and tadpoles and shit like that. Um, and then, like my i get like this blue tint over my eyes like i walked into like some saran wrapping you know or whatever you know like people fucking put the uh plastic over the the uh, doorway and you run into it kind of thing (laughs) um but like it so like it just like it's a blue tint and then all of a sudden the snow is gone and like 10 15 feet in front of me is this little village of mushroom people and they're stoking a fire and I'm just like, what in the world is happening? And like, they got like little huts made out of mushrooms and they're going upside the the trees and shit. And I was just like, what the hell? And they all have like little, like a little bundle of sticks and they're throwing it into this fire in the center of their village. Um, and now when I say mushroom people, like they're not people that look like mushrooms. They're literally mushrooms that are just moving around. Um, they're like three inches tall. Um, I guess the best way that they they look because they in color and stuff like that is like portobello mushrooms, um, okay. which portobello mushrooms actually are like super good for you for your yeah. your brain cells and all that shit. Um, so they just they're mushrooms. They have no face, no features of you know human. They had like little like these little arms though, um, 
but other than that, like the arms are the only thing that really tied them to being humans. They didn't have like separating legs either. It almost looked like the stem was just like kind of like, well, like you know, going like this around yeah, the ground. Yeah. Um, and then I get this tap on the back of my head, and my just it didn't hurt. It wasn't like a hard tap, but my head just like kind of like goes like that real quick, and my glasses fall off my face onto the on onto the ground, and I feel something on my shoulder. And I just turn and look, and there's a mushroom on my fucking shoulder. And I was just like, <laughs> and um, like tele, uh, telepathically, um, I hear a voice in my head. It says, you don't need those. I was like, my glasses? And then it goes, yes. And just as it says yes, it's like fucking just like just that, like that snap of the fingers. Because I'm like this. And then he's gone, or she, or it, whatever. Yeah. Um, and my sister standing there and she's like, what's wrong? And I was like, uh, uh, I lost my glasses. And I look down <laughs> and I don't see them. And she comes over. She's like, Oh no. And I get down on my hands and knees and I'm like doing this with the snow and the leaves and shit. And all of a sudden, like my sister gets in front of me, like, and she's still on her feet. And then I just hear crack. And then instantly the mushroom people go out of my mind. And I'm like, oh, my fucking glasses. Yeah. Oh no, you know, and I run home and um my mom's like, I'm not gonna get go get you uh another pair. Um you know, I think you have uh appointment in like two weeks or a week or something like that. Um, you know, your prescription might change. So I'm just gonna I'll just wait then because there's no point in buying them now and then have to get new lenses anyway so we go to the doctors we do the we do the eye tests and everything like that and then we're sitting there in the in the in the room and he just you know when he back when they used to sit on these little fucking rolling st stools yeah fucking he's sitting there and he's looking he just goes through it really quick and he just kind of turns around and he goes you have 2020 vision like my mom's just like what and i'm like what <laughs> and he's just like yeah your eyes are fine he's like they they got they got a lot better already and i was like uh that's weird like because i didn't ever know like the whole time that after this had happened um like i didn't notice like my eyes getting better i, I just like it just never like dawned on me like i was looking at things that and like when he said that like i just looked around the room and i was like yeah things aren't really blurry actually <laughs> um and he's like yeah so you know just you know maybe keep them for um uh, watching tv and reading books but you know your your eye your eyes seem to be uh to be fine and and that was that. My mom's like, I'm not getting you glasses. And I was like, <laughs> he just said that I need them for, you know, watching TV and yeah. reading books. And my mom's like, nope, not getting glasses. I'm not spending yeah. money. What I heard is that you don't need them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I never got, gla I've never worn glasses again. Um, I I don't to this day. So um, they were right. You don't need those. You didn't need those. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. So um, now. I remember everything but the mushroom people. Everything about this story, I remember organically. Like, it wasn't just, like, like all of this came out of the regression. It's literally yeah. just the the mushroom people. Um, so, yeah, dude, it's... I don't know. Like, Fey? Fey realm, maybe? maybe? I went through a portal for a quick second. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just hope that we, like that there that's not like a false memory out of regression, yeah. but something something happened to me that caused my eyes to essentially heal themselves. Yeah, well, I mean, they there are stories of people walking through like the woods, or even when people are lost within the woods, mm -hmm. um, they have moments where they they see the people looking for them but for some reason the people looking for them don't see them and it's like they're in another realm within the same place you know so i don't know it could be something like that you just kind of walked into 
an area where they were, so it's kind of like warped. And you just kind of stepped into it for a short time, and they were like, hey, this guy doesn't need glasses. <laughs> yeah, I like, I, I want to attribute that it wasn't meant to happen, and that because I ended up in there, I don't know, maybe they just healed me because just because yeah. I, I ended up there. You know what I mean? So... I wish they would have would have healed me in a different way, but you know that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> you take a win where you can find a win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I'm okay with how everything. Well, there's a lot of things that happened in my in my life. I wouldn't be who I am, you know, right now. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with who I am. And that's you don't need glasses. Yeah, glasses. <laughs> yeah, I uh, do. I need I like I'm wearing contacts right now. If I wasn't wearing contacts, you? I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to see anything that's going on the screen right now. <laughs> I was uh I had uh uh Mark Steves on um last week, I think. He's uh My Family Thinks I'm Crazy podcast. Um Okay. He uh he's also the booker for uh Tinfoil Hat. I don't know if you've heard of that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Sam Tripley. Uh, and... Yeah, Sam uh, Tripley. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's their booker. Um, and he was on and we were talking about Atlantis and, and, and shit. And um I I try not to talk about that the my um experiences now after eighty something episodes, you know, that have you know already have told my stories a little bit on my own yeah. show. But something compelled me to tell him that story at the end. Like he had to go. He's like, I got, you know, you know, I got to go. He only had a certain amount of time. So I was like, Hey, can I tell you this story real quick? I was like, everybody that listens, you know, is going to, has heard this story and they might not like that. I'm telling the story for the hundredth time, but you know, and I, I tell him the story and he's like, He's like, I need some fucking mushroom people to heal me. I'm wearing contacts. And I'm like, well, fucking, I would never know. Well, then again, I'm looking at you through a screen. So how the fuck would yeah. I know anyway? Um, But he told me, because I've never heard anybody else having, you know, a similar story. And he said that he heard on another podcast, somebody with a similar story where they saw mushroom people and they were healed in some kind of way. And he's gonna he said that he would send me the link but i know i know he's fucking busy so uh he's got a lot going on on his plate so you know but that also I'm allows you see, that's, what's, that's what's beautiful about like being able to talk to a bunch of people and like getting yeah. different perspectives or hearing just simply hearing that somebody had the same type of experience because then it allows you to go okay cool i don't have to question that if it's, this is a false memory or something, Absolutely. because somebody else has experienced this exact thing, so, right? And you've never listened to that podcast or that episode to that podcast before, so it wouldn't like it wouldn't have been planted in your brain to like make that up or anything. Yeah, right. And um, and I was on uh, the confessionals too, talking about the same story, and he's never heard of any uh, story like that either so when mark was like oh you know you know i'll send you the link to this podcast to this episode where this guy talks about this i was like yeah dude i I really want to know and uh tony was like fucking i'm gonna put it on my reddit see if anybody has has had anything i don't know if he has done that yet or yeah anything at all but he hasn't reached out busy guy (laughs) yes very yeah. um i just uh was talking to his wife the other because i have his number now but i feel yeah. weird i don't want to like i don't want to text him um, oh, yeah, same be like, yeah yeah so um but yeah i i emailed his wife and i was like hey you know thank you for having me on the show i was wondering if tony would want to 
you know, come on to my show. And she's like, can you do me a favor and ask in March? <laughs> like, yes. yes. <laughs> I'll ask in March. So like when I, if he ever does come on to my show, like I want to talk to him and see if, yeah, like I want to see if he ever uh, put it on his Reddit, but he doesn't run his Reddit though. That's the problem. Yeah. He has you can always put that... the call out on like TikTok too. Yeah. You know, TikTok true. has a pretty good reach. I might, I might just, yeah, I might do, I gotta, you know, put a fucking popular fucking trending song sound or, or whatever, sound yeah. or whatever <laughs> the fuck and see what happens. Um, I never thought, I never it's gonna thought be of you talking like about, to look about healing myself. mushrooms. It's, it's gonna be you talking about <laughs> healing mushrooms with like a Nicki Minaj song playing in the background or something. Uh, well, wet ass <laughs> pussy. Yeah. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> uh, shit, son. <laughs> shit. Um, but what? What other? Because I mean, you went from seeing what what can be attributed to witches to having a spirit. Oh well, well no, having shadow figures around to having yeah. a spirit uh, tell you to be patient. Um, which I could also be attributed to like probably like an angel like experience, you know, if it, if that's something that helped you later on down, down the yeah, road. Um, for sure. And then, and then having these healing mushroom figures, you know, uh, what have you had any other, has there been, has there been maybe like a UFO? experience of sorts i i have yet to experience a, a ufo thus far um i hope to someday um well, me and my kids took a vacation out to arizona i really wanted to you know i i looked up like constantly when we were out there because uh, i really wanted to to see something um but yeah. I will tell you these two stories that happened to me when I was living out in the woods in my own house. Um, you couldn't, I couldn't see neighbors um, from my house and, and shit. And it was just in the backwoods of Maine. Um, so the first one was uh, 2014. Um, I think it was fall. Cause I think I was wearing a sweater cause it was like, tip bit nipply um and I'm, I'm driving home from work and i'm like i could almost see my house and this fucking coyote comes out and stops in front of me in the middle of the road and i'm staring at it this motherfucker is huge too like it's wolf size i'm like is this a wolf or is this a coyote but it looks like yeah. a coyote but it's just massive and i was like holy holy shit look at this fucking thing and i'm stopped and it's like look and it's looking at at me i like i feel like we're making eye contact i was like is this look, yeah. thing looking at me or looking at the vehicle i was like i feel like it's looking at me right through the windshield and we just stared at each other for like a couple seconds or so and then it nonchalantly just moseys on across the, the rest of the street and into the woods and i pull up right where he went into the woods and I'm watching it and it's just walking and like, like it has no care in the world. I was like, is this somebody's dog? Like, is it, yeah. it looked, it looked clean. It looked fluffy, but it, it was humongous. Um, it could have been a type of German shepherd, but it was bigger than a German shepherd. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it like, it was a wolf like it, but it, yeah. it was like fucking Brown, uh, and Sandy colored. Yeah. Was it, like, did it like have like coyotes. a, skinny features like a coyote like kind of lanky um, yes yeah like yeah, the, okay. the legs were like long and skinny and stuff like it wasn't a big big beef it was it was just a big it was just big it was yeah. just large tall um and it's walking through the woods and i'm watching it and it stops and turns around and stares at me again and I swear to god i'm like holy fuck dude this fucking thing is looking at me yeah I swear to God. And then um, it turns back 
It's almost like it, it was like stop the stare. Are you sure you want to keep watching me? Kind of thing. Yeah. And then it turns around and keeps walking, and then there's like there's this big huge fucking pine tree. And there's like an embankment, and then you gotta like kind of step up and then over, and then the, it goes down a little bit. I think there was like a ravine right there or something down on the other side, but I'm not 100% sure. I just remember that um, that there's a there's a, a little bit of a drop off. It's not like super steep, but anyways, it walks up to right next to the tree to go over this and it's fucking puts its paw out towards the tree for some and i was like what the fuck like it first of all is a weird act and as it did it, it it like went with its other paw to go over this embankment and the one that went the paw that went to the tree turned into a human hand and i was just like oh my god and i just stepped yeah. on the gas <laughs> and, and like it went and, and like i watched it and it just like continued going and i fucking went home I burst into the door and I was like, guess what the fuck I just saw? My ex-wife is like in the middle of doing dishes and she's like, what? I was like, there's a, I just saw a fucking coyote. And she's like in the middle of the day. And I was like, yeah, but it was huge. It looked like a wolf. And she's like, what? No way. That's crazy. Like, you know, just basically brushing me off. Yeah. And you're and, like, you're like, just wait. It gets crazier. Yeah. And I go, yeah. Why you haven't heard the craziest part? And she just like kind of like stops and does this thing. Is like really? And I go, yeah. it's paw turned into a human hand. And she just fucking goes, you're fucking crazy. And then just turns back around and starts doing the dishes. And I was like, I swear to God, I swear. Like there's <laughs> there's no doubt in my mind that that paw was a human hand. And she's like, yeah. you're fucking, you're a silly goose. Is basically what she told me. And I was, I was like, you're the one sitting here telling, because at the, the in this moment in time, my son was watching uh, Finding Bigfoot all the time on on TV, and yeah. I didn't like it because I was like, Bigfoot's not real, you know, none of this. this <laughs> I can't believe anybody would believe in Bigfoot, and uh, you know, and my my ex wife was like, oh, just let him watch it. it. He he likes it and stuff like that, and I was like. And then, like in that moment, I was like, "This is coming from somebody who watches fucking Bigfoot shows with my <laughs> with uh, with Braden." I was like, "You're not gonna believe me about this fucking dog's hand turning into a paw turning into a hand." And she's just like, "You're," she's like, "Just stop." She's like, "That's silly." And she's like, "Maybe it was like the lighting, like the shadows coming through the tree." I was like, "Shadows is not gonna make a fucking <laughs> dog's paw look like a fucking human hand." Yeah, I was going to say, there's right two, they're two different, like, shaped <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God. And then from that day on, I was like, Bigfoot's real, too. You yeah. know what I mean? I was like, you t- I you go to your son, turn that Bigfoot show back on. Yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> what I did. That, I think that night, actually, we I started watching Big Finding Bigfoot with him. Yeah. And we sat on the couch, <laughs> snuggled up. He was only, like, fucking seven or eight at the time. Yeah. So... That's that's wild. That that reminds me because like, I guess you knew immediately something was off about this like coyote. Yeah, as yeah. Soon as you saw it, and then when it made eye contact with you, you're like, "This is like." Did it feel like making eye contact with a person, or did it feel like, like when a dog is looking at you or something? Did it feel? I don't. I can't. I can't like really like say. But I just all I know is like it, it looked like because. You know, when you're in your car, when an animal is looking at you, it's looking at the car. Yeah. But like, it looked like it was looking into my eyes, like at my yeah. eyeballs. You know, like at there was my intelligence face. behind it or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, because when I pull, like, I'm stopping for it, just like not thinking anything. I like the thought was, you know, this coyote's fucking huge, kind of thing. And, but I was just letting it pass. And when it stopped and just like fucking stared at me, that's when like all my senses were like heightened and I started paying attention to it and how it looked. And I was like, this fucking thing is big, clean, and it's staring at me. Yeah. No, that's... I was like, if it wanted to, it could probably fucking kill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's how big it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that reminds me of uh, I had somebody on and they they were sharing a story of seeing what appeared to be like just a giant dog walking across the road. Like it just stepped out into the middle of the road and 
he he's explaining the story and he just says i don't know how else to explain it man but when it reached the end of the the other side of the street it just stood up on two legs and then walked away <laughs> oh my god that's crazy so I mean, kind it's of not crazy. Me. It's crazy to see is what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But it reminds me of that, of you seeing what you think is just a regular, a, a big version of like an animal. But it like it makes eye contact with you, not once, but twice, because it looks back at you. Yeah. Um, and then just goes to step over and just <laughs> hand on a tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I literally like for a good fucking hour. I was like, I'm fucking. I lost my mind. Like, I, my mind is broken. Like, there's yeah. something wrong with me right now. But I can imagine feeling that way. Like, as soon you know, as you see I, something that kind of just is is out of the realm of what is possible to you, it's just <laughs> your yeah. mind kind of breaks and snaps. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I, I do, I can, I literally can, when I tell that story, I literally like am back there. It's just like, I'm, I'm sitting there all over again every time too. And, um, and the next story too, is when I tell this, like I can, I can feel all those feelings. Like I don't yeah. feel like the, the fear feeling per se, but I can, I remember like exactly like how I was feeling in the, in those moments. Yeah. It's like you're back there. Right. Yeah. Um, and not a lot of stories really do that. Like the mushroom people story, that doesn't really do that. Um, like I remember the story, but um and then like the guy on the swing set and stuff like that. Um but yeah, so um after that, two two years later, um it's twenty sixteen. Um my uh me and my ex wife are now split, so uh, I have the house to myself. I get my kids on the weekends every weekend, um, Friday to Monday, Friday night to Monday morning. And uh, so it was during a weekday, and I was went to bed. I went to bed way too late because back then I was just like I was going on dates like crazy because I thought like fucking I had to. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. know. Like, like to it's fill just, a void or something, right? Yeah. So yeah. I was I was out to dinner with a, a girl that night, um, and it was far too late. Then I I um I should have been out. You know what I mean? So, but I got home and um I only had a little bit of time to sleep before I had to get up for work in the morning, and I fucking conked right out. And now coyotes come into my yard like all the time at this house. Like, not every night, but at least once a week. And they look at, like, actual coyotes. They weren't fucking huge like the, <laughs> the one that crossed the road. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. And, uh, you could tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I wake up to my dogs barking. I had two dogs at the time. One of them I still have, and she's sitting right here in front of me staring at me because she knows that I'm talking about her. Um, and now she's getting up and coming towards me because she knows that I'm talking about her. <laughs> um, but I wake up to them barking like crazy. And I get, I, I, you know, I sit up and I'm like, shut up. What the hell? Like, I only have this little time, this little window of yeah. sleep. <laughs> but if I was doing things that I should have been doing, like I would have already been sleeping long before. Yeah. I ever did, but anyways. Uh, so they're they're losing their minds, and I can hear the coyotes outside. So I throw the pillow at, at them because they're like right in front of the window. I throw the pillow at my dogs, and I'm like, uh, "It's just fucking coyotes. You know this already. Like, what the fuck? Like, we've gotten used to this by now." Um, and they just kept barking, and they were scratching at the walls and stuff. And I saw them like, "All right." So I get up and I, you know, so I have a really long driveway and it kind of like it comes from from the main road and it kind of like cur it curves around this big oak tree kind of like this and then comes down and it's like a little bit of a hill. And um, a lot of like New England area, uh, like rural areas, the um, properties are separated by um, rock walls. And so my property was 
you know, sectioned off by a rock wall. And to the left side of the house um, is this huge ass boulder. It's like, so this, they, it is almost like they found this big ass boulder and was like, this is where we're going to put the line. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so they built the rock wall around this big ass boulder and this boulder was a little bit taller than me and I'm 5'10". So like to put a height on the rock is probably six feet tall. Damn. Um, and the only reason why I know that it's taller than me is because I've been I was out there with my kids. My kids like to fucking crawl on the on the on the uh, rock wall all the time. So I've been out there so there's like a there's a couple there's a little bit of a tree line so like it's in it, the wall is technically in the center of this tree line so you got a couple trees the rock wall a little bit more trees and then there's a big open field and then you know a while away f- like the field belonged to a farm that you can't even see from from my house um and i could see like the moon was fucking super bright and I could see into the field, like I could make out through the trees into the field. And I could see the coyotes run. They would run down towards the, the woods behind the house. So like the behind the house was fucking it was miles and miles of wilderness. And then they would run up the field towards the towards the road. So it's almost like they got to the road and then they'd run back and they would almost like be like they got to the tree line out back and then they would fucking turn around and run yeah. back. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening with these fucking coyotes right now? <laughs> um, so then I notice a coyote limping down my driveway, like literally just walking down my driveway and it's limping. And I was like, oh, shit. And then my dogs, as soon as it starts coming down the driveway, my dogs go from the window to the front door. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I go to the front door and I flip on the uh, outside light on. Bright l- bright light shines all out in front of the house. And this dog, this coyote, gets pretty close to the house. Um, not like too close um, to where like I could see anything that was actually wrong with it. Yeah. And it's whimpering and it's limping and stuff. And I was like literally... Um, I was literally about to fucking, you know, open the door. Like my hand is on the doorknob and I'm like, should I go outside to help this thing? I was like, cause uh, I mean, coyotes are like, even if you're trying to rescue it, they're going to bite you. Um, and, and coyotes are more f- afraid of you than anything, but like you try and yeah. grab it. It's just, yeah. um, <laughs> as a defense kind of thing, but. You know, I, I don't know, like I, there was like a part of me that just wanted to help it. And just as I, I grab the knob and I look to see where these uh, the other coyotes are in the field. And I see this fucking pair of red eyes right where that big ass boulder is. And it was a little bit higher than that boulder. So whatever it was, was tall. And it was like stood behind it. It was taller than so it was taller than six feet. And this just induced fear comes over me and i'm just like holy like i just i like i feel like i'm gonna die all of a sudden like i feel like something wants to kill me and i let go of the doorknob and then shut the light off and as soon as that light goes off that dog perk that coyote perks right up turns right around and runs out of my driveway and as soon as she did that i freaking i looked back i could see those red eyes still I was like, fuck this. I freaking grabbed my rifle, <laughs> fucking put the fucking, because the magazine already has the fucking rounds in it. Yeah. I popped it in, pulled that bolt action, popped that fucking uh, round right into the chamber and yeah. sat on my couch. My dogs shut the fuck up in that moment, too. <laughs> Followed me to the living room, got right on the couch with me. I put the freaking rifle in my lap. Both of them sat on each side, not fucking saying a word. Like they literally, just, as soon as I felt that, they stopped fucking barking. And then they sat on the couch with me all fucking night. I woke up the next morning like this, and my fucking head straight back. And I was like, oh. yeah. I ended up being late for work that day. I'd, I'd say that's a perfect reason to be late for work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking dude, I was, so, that was, um, 
the first of the two experiences that I've had that scared the shit out of me. Like I've had two really scary experiences and that one was one of them. Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine that that amount of fear that would just set in, in that moment. Yeah. Especially for like, yeah, the, for like the first 20 minutes to a half an hour or so, I just kept staring at, I was stared at the uh, living room window with my, like I hadn't, I had the fucking stock of the, of my rifle into my shoulder, like yeah. ready to just fucking like shoot something. Cause I was, thought something was going to come through my window. Yeah. And, and like, I, all I saw was eyes and I fucking scared. I got so scared that something was going to come into my house and, and fucking yeah. kill me. And in your mind, what did you think it was? afterwards well so i didn't know like i had no idea like i just like i was thinking it was a demon or like yeah you know some kind of like evil entity or whatever but in like 2020 is when i really started 2020 was when i started listening to podcasts and um well started with joe rogan and then i went to tinfoil hat and then, you know, Tony, Tony Merkel, because I heard Tony Merkel on uh, Tinfoil Hat. So yeah. I went to his podcast and he was talking. He had a lot of like episodes about Dogman. And this was like right when right around the time that Expedition Dogman was coming out on YouTube, too. So and I told my son about this Dogman story and my son fucking wanted to watch it. So I went over to my ex-wife's house and my son and I watched uh, Expedition Dogman together. Um, and uh, I think after hearing all these Dogman stories and stuff, um, I think it it was I think it was a Dogman. I mean, that's what most people feel in their stories. They feel an immense amount of fear come over them. Um, I know a lot of people have talked about red eyes being involved in yeah, their experiences. Red, red or amber. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, those do correlate. And with the amount of fear you felt is just enough for you to sit with the gun, you know, ready to <laughs> shoot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, no, it, I didn't even hesitate. It was just as immediately as soon as I saw it, I was light off, grabbed the gun. It was, it was just, it was, man, I was, I was so fucking scared. Yeah, I, I like I said, I can only imagine. I can only imagine that amount of fear being set over you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I wonder. I, I, I wonder if anybody, anybody listening, has had like a similar. I know there have been people mm -hmm. who have had those experiences, but I think when more and more people talk about it, it even something simple as that, because you didn't really see like any facial structures on anything. You just knew right. red eyes, fear. Yeah. And that was it. And I wonder if anybody has had that, and then maybe just thought they were imagining something yeah that, that's but. possible i wonder too um i also wonder if anybody in that area has ever seen anything like that too yeah that would be a good thing to check up on <laughs> like oh if you God. do you keep in contact with any of the neighbors no i never even talked to them when i was okay. out there to begin with like that and that's what the way I liked it, you know what I mean? I don't wanna yeah, yeah. I don't wanna talk to anybody. I could go right out in my backyard and shoot shoot a fucking target or something. So Yeah. <laughs> it was Or the whatever dog man was there, you can shoot that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um as after that experience too, I started um going out to the um to the target area and shooting even more. Yeah. Um Cause I wanted to get accurate, but, and then I met my ex-girlfriend and everything went out the window and I was just like, Oh, let, let me move into your little dinky apartment with you, <laughs> you know, leave this yeah. big ass house behind, <laughs> you know? So that's what I did. Cause I thought I was in love. Yeah. Or, well, yeah, I, I should say, I thought she was in love with me. 
Yeah. Well, she may be. She she might have been, but you know, she fucking she broke me, and that's what led to to the that third time of contemplating. Oh, okay. So. Um, so it all all these things have led you down the path that you're on now. Yeah. yeah. Where now you get to make these connections with people and allow them to speak on. Yeah. On things and. I love yeah. it, dude. I love it. Um. It's a, uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun, so far, and it, and it's just, I'm just getting started too. Still, yeah, like it's still coming up off the ground, you know. Um, yeah, I've met a lot of good people. Yeah, there are a ton of good people out there. A yeah. lot of weirdos, but we're all weirdos when we're in this. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I was on. Um, uh, I was interviewed too by um, uh, Ashley Hilt. Uh, we talk on Wednesdays. We talk weird, and okay. she had a because she's doing like a because she normally doesn't do like guest interviews and stuff like that. But I think yeah. she's starting a whole new co- uh, podcast, and she had this uh, guy on like as a co-host, and his name was Kevin too. And she's like, she's like, we'll just call you Weird Kevin and him Normal Kevin. And I was <laughs> like, oh, I'm fucking cool with that. I don't yeah. Know. She's like, oh, I didn't think you would mind being called weird. I was like, no, I mean, fucking the show is where the weird ones are. This is where the weird ones come to have conversations. (laughs) In your in your realm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all it's all good in the hood. I will tell you. um, Because you had a lot of uh, sleep paralysis. um. Uh, occurrences throughout your life the other really scary thing that has happened to me was a sleep paralysis thing um so it was in this room literally right where i'm sitting is where my my bed was so uh, the walls right here so this is where my head was and my phone was probably about here because my bed is a king size so it pretty much took up this whole like space right here um, so yeah, my, my, my phone was probably literally like fucking right here where my computer is and I'm laying out over here, kind of just sprawled out door wide open. Um, and I just, I, I wake up to my name being called and I just kind of like, I'm like groggy and I look up and fucking through my doorway, the shadow figure comes walking in like crazy um and it looked it looked like a woman like i could see like f- enough features to tell that it was a woman like i could see like the the figure and the fucking hair and stuff like that like normally yeah. when i see shadow people i can just see an outline like a regular outline like i don't see like you can't i can't tell that they have hair or anything it's just you know a head yeah um, so that was weird i couldn't fucking as this thing's coming through my doorway i can't move I'm stuck and I feel like this heavy weight on my chest and I'm, my breathing gets heavier and I'm like, (laughs) like all you can do is breathe in and not really out. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm literally like, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to move, you know, because I don't know what's happening. And I was, dude, I thought, like, I literally thought this might be um, something coming in, like, somebody coming in to murder me. Like, yeah, just like, fucking get up (laughs) on the bed and just fucking throw a fucking knife through my chest. Um, And I'm sitting there and I turn, I, I can't even, like, turn my head, but I look, I'm like, my eyes go to the corner, corner of my eyes. Yeah, as far as they can go. Yeah, and I could see my phone. And I start, like, I start wiggling my fingers like this to try and reach my phone. Like, I'm grabbing onto my sheet and trying to pull my hand forward. And it just as this thing fucking gets to the foot of my bed, I fucking, my whole body jolts forward to, I mean, to the side uh, to grab my phone and I f- hit the button on the side of my phone and light it up and I go like that and there's nothing there. And I was like, holy fucking shit, dude. I thought I was just about yeah. to die. 
and I'm sitting there. I'm like sitting up in my bed, just breathing. And I feel a dab of fucking sweat fucking, you know, roll down the side of my face. And I was just like, yeah, holy shit. And the best way to describe how this fucking thing was walking into my room is like C-3PO. So it was just like very stiff like this coming in yeah. and i was like what the fuck like is like that itself like <laughs> if it walked normally it might not have been as terrifying to me but that was just like i was like oh my god what is this and yeah because it um, almost sounds like if I it's told the trying story to, Tommy to be and human he's like yeah it, it, yes yes yeah. yes yes um and Tommy's like, fucking, that sounds like uh, the nurses from Silent Hill. And I was like, yeah, kind yeah. of, in a way. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking, oh, man, dude. I was I, <laughs> I was so scared that I didn't want to go to the bathroom. I, I, and in that moment, too, because I'm sitting there trying yeah. to catch my breath. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to pee. <laughs> and I'm sitting there staring at my doorway. And then um, I'm like, all right, fuck it. I, I'm, I'm not going to pee up here obviously yeah. i did think, i did think about opening my window and i was like no oh, because there's still a chance to fucking like dribble it yeah. inside as <laughs> uh, so i walk to the doorway and i stand there and i go if you have negative intent i don't want you here you're not welcome and i stood there for a minute and yeah. then i jumped out of the doorway to the <laughs> hallway because of the like diagonally to the right is the stairs yeah but there's a little bit more hallway to the left so i just like got in karate stand jumped out in karate stand <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking ghosts can't survive a karate yeah. chop yeah no it's, that's 100%. that's well known yeah it's very well known. <laughs> it's well documented yeah I don't know what is up with my freaking throat, but <laughs> no worries. We've been talking for a while, so you probably like dry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it seems wild, especially with the fact of it almost trying to as be as human as it can with it walking towards you the way it was walking. Yeah, all, that's all that's all that, that came to me. Like was that it was pretending to be human. Yeah, it w- it was pretending to be a shadow person too. Yeah. Like I don't think it was a uh, real organic shadow person. Yeah, but I think that whatever it was presented itself in that way because it knew that I was familiar with that. Because yep. there's, I see shadow people all the time out in this hallway too. Yeah, since I moved in. They don't yeah, do anything. So almost, almost like it was trying to win you over. The same with mine that I told on the show when it used like the facade of being my fiance to kind of yeah. like gain some, like for me to either brush it off or for me to trust it in some way. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. That's what, yeah. And I don't, I, I kind of in the, Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I let it get on the bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, would it have just been like, huh, got to the bed, made it look like it was about to get on the bed, and it would have been like, oh, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Or something like, or would it have killed me? Or like, what? I, what? I, like, I want to know now. I mean, I don't want to know, but I, like, I want to yeah. know. Like, I don't want to experience what would have happened, but. I'm just, uh, was it evil? I don't know. It felt it. I, it felt it, it in in a way to like. Again, with the, the amount of fear that came in. Yeah. 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 Um, but Isn't yeah, it I funny feel... that, that in those moments where you're trying so hard to move, that when you finally break out of it, you're so scared that you don't want to move after you <laughs> fought it so much? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I, I I had to I had to pee and I didn't even want to yeah. uh, fucking move. I just I like just sat there and I was just like, oh, fuck this. What am I doing <laughs> with my life? Why am I in a haunted house? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, those are insanely scary moments. So I, I completely feel you on that. Absolutely, <laughs> fucking terrifying. And 
you know, I just, and then other than that, there's like just little things that happen here. Um, I'm pretty sure my uncle visited me one morning, sat on my bed and I felt the paralysis, but I wasn't scared. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was just more like calm, fearful of turning to see something. Like I was more afraid of seeing something, not of what's going to happen to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it, I was just laying on my stomach and my dog's head was resting on my, on my knee. Um, cause I was like, uh, like those old fucking chalk figures that you see. I was just like, I was just okay, like, yeah. <laughs> that's with my knee up or whatever. And my dog's head was there and she just picks it up and looks at my doorway. And because my back is to the door. And I'm like, I'm looking at her because I just woke up and she's just like, huh? like she's looking at somebody. And then, um, I feel this weight on the, on the mattress, like somebody had just sat down right next to my feet. And I was like, huh? like that. And I'm staring <laughs> at my dog still. And then she's just like, huh? and puts her head back down onto my, onto my leg. Not, and it like right when her head touched my leg i got the sensation that you know my uncle was was there yeah and like she knew it was it wasn't anything threatening yeah exactly exactly and um it was like it was early on it was probably like i think it was only had been like two or three months of me in this house and when i bought this house i was like um i was still going through you know this really rough breakup and shit and she was still she was still attached to me and still causing like these feelings um like she wanted me but she didn't want me kind of thing and it was almost like she was stringing me along so i had all these like mixed emotions like you know um it's almost like he came came to me yeah yeah. and i feel like he came to me just to be like hey man it's okay kind of be patient yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. It was interesting. I still I don't yeah. know if it was my uncle. I just like in that moment I had this sensation yeah. of like warmth and in that moment I just thought of my uncle. So Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a beautiful way to go full circle of to begin with. Yeah, an incident that said be patient and almost almost again to have this this uh, experience be like a hey I know things are rough right now but just be patient write it out yeah yeah so that's pretty awesome it is awesome I like it yeah. I didn't really put the correlation of the the be patient to a lot of things but you you've opened my mind my friend <laughs> and i think you're right i think you're right yeah that's all, that's what i was that's what my mind was piecing together as you were telling these things your yeah. experiences so yeah i think um i think it's good too to like go on other shows and tell these stories because yeah. I get a little bit of a different aspect from each host, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I just got that, like the, it's almost like my life motto now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. From the sounds of it, like I didn't never would have, I don't think I would have put all those correlations together my own self. Um. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for that. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. Well, before we head on out, before we close the show, uh, remind everybody where they can find you and your show so they can listen and, you know, hear the people that you talk to. All right, man. So uh, the show is Where the Weird Ones Are. It is on uh, Apple, Amazon Music iHeartRadio, Spotify, and the video aspect is on YouTube and Rumble. Um, I do have a website if anybody's interested in reading the blog or uh, getting a hold of any kind of merch of or whatever. 
Um, and you can see pictures of, you know, people who've bought merch. I got a gallery on there. So that's where the weird ones are podcast.com. Um, and real, I don't know when, uh, you're going to put this out, but just in case any of your listeners are in the North Carolina area around Hamlet, I am, uh, vending at, um, encounter quest on April 13th. Um, and that's Hamlet, North Carolina. Uh, so if you want to attend that, uh, you get your tickets at, um, encounterquest.com and I'll be selling some, uh, t-shirts of, um, from my merch store and my homemade hot sauce. So I'm excited about that, trying to start a side business for hot sauce. So we'll see where that takes me. Yeah. This episode will be out before then. So definitely people Uh, can, can get the information beforehand. (laughs) Nope. Dope. So if you're in the North Carolina area, come uh, check Encounter Quest out and come say hello to me. Because I'll say yeah. hi back. Buy merch and hot sauce. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll throw every every one of your links down below. I'll even put the link for where you'll be vending at so people can just click through there as well. Nice. Um, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing your stories. I know you got personal in some of them, so I appreciate you sharing that aspect as well. And at the end of it, man, I appreciate you still being patient and being around so we can connect. Thanks, man. You know, Thanks. I'm happy you did. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on, man. It's, uh, um, it's an honor. Um, and I'm 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 glad that you know I'm glad that we've been able to connect three times now. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 been a lot of fun, dude. And um, I like talking to you. So I hope uh, I hope we can uh, continue talking. And um, I wish you nothing but success in in, in this, dude. Because I think you're a really good, dude. So. Um, well, just the vibes that. you give out, dude. It's just you're warm and inviting, so I think it's pretty dope. Well, I appreciate that. It really means a lot. It means a lot. Yeah, and we'll definitely we'll definitely do more in the future, man. We'll definitely do more. Perfect. I wish you nothing Perfect. but the what the nothing but the best as well. I mean, you're crushing it anyways on putting all these episodes out and making all these. So don't make me blush. <laughs> uh, for everybody listening, watching, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe if you're watching on the YouTube and hit the stupid little bell. Um, and if you want to send in any of your own stories, if any of Kevin's stories have connected with you in a way that you want to share it yourself, you can message me on Instagram at Induce Podcast, TikTok Induce Fear, email inducefearpod at gmail.com. Let us know. I'll even put you in contact with Kevin, or you can just go follow a page and tell him yourself. But again, I want to thank you to everybody listening. Don't forget to ask questions and face your fears. Thanks for joining me and Kevin on this episode of Induced Fear. Bye. Bye.